but since the bank bailout, the banks have, have concluded that they aren't going to lend farmers money. In fact, shortly after that bailout occurred, we got calls from a lot of the, the uh, supermarket chains. They couldn't get the loans to buy the groceries to put on their shelves to sell the people that are coming in to buy groceries. And, and you're going to go through all the dots, but then connect them and tell people where this is going. And that's what's so stunning at the end of this talk. But uh, beginning in that conversation yesterday that was so dynamic, you bring up the fact of what's really behind the pushing of the food stamps. Break that down. Oh, food stamps. Uh, that's an interesting deal. I, I think that all of your viewers have had to have heard the advertisements encouraging people to, to get food stamps. It's everywhere. For crying out loud. And, and we've got a situation. Now, now Governor Romney, in one of his, his political talks, made the statement that he wants to cut back on food stamps, on, on the funding for food stamps. That's not the message. Bottom line, what we want to get to in this country is the point where we have built the economy, we have jobs, and we have people being able to work and earn enough money so they don't have to be on food stamps. But look at what's happened. We are getting advertisements. They're talking to a mature lady from the ones that I saw, and I get a little bit goofy over this kind of stuff because it just aggravates the daylights out of me because what they're saying is, or she's saying, well, can I get food stamps if I have a car? And, oh, yes, you might be able to get food stamps if you have a car. Well, can I get food stamps if I have a house? Oh, yes, you might be able to get food stamps. Can I, can I still get food stamps if I have a job? Well, yes, you might be able. To. They're encouraging people to get food stamps. Who's paying for that? And here's the interesting thing. The government has made commitments like crazy, not just with the food stamps issue, but with the fact that 50% of the population of this country, what was the richest country in the world, is now, 50% of that population now has to be subsidized for their groceries, food stamps, the welfare programs generally, and some of the other things like WIC and all that, and churches, churches. And Steve, I remember you five years ago, and I knew you knew what you were talking about. You're, you're very respected. I mean, I mean, really, the trailblazer, the grandfather of the whole Storable Foods movement. You were saying there's going to be shortages. This is all coming. They want to shut it down. It's part of the plan. And I'm like, really? I mean, I mean, this is really going to happen? And now so much of it is coming true. I can't wait to hear you know, the conclusion of where you see all this going. But now it's clear. One word is what's happening. The domestication of the American people. That's what you define in animals uh, or in slavery with humans in history, what domestication is, is when an animal depends on you for food. I, I mean, this is what they're doing. They are doing everything they can to destroy the crops. You know how to catch wild hogs? Let me tell you how to catch wild hogs, okay? You're out there, you got a, a wily old, old boar that's leading the pack, and they got a whole bunch of hogs. And they're pretty wily about people like you because you're going to shoot them. Okay, what you do is you start putting some posts around in this one area, okay? And the old hogs are sitting back there and they're watching you. And then what you do is you go out and you put some boards on those posts and you make a fence. And then you make a gate. And you put a rope on the gate. And the hogs are sitting back there saying, what are these guys doing? These guys are out here. I don't know what they're doing. And then one day you walk in with a bushel of corn. And you pour it right in the middle of that fence and you leave. And they sit back there for maybe a couple of days and watch that and think, hmm, what the heck is that? So one of them's more adventuresome, goes in there and nibbles on that corn and says, hmm, that's pretty good corn. And then you just leave it there. And pretty soon the rest come in and they, they join that one. And pretty soon the corn's gone and they sit back and they watch. And then you take another bushel of corn in there. Only this time, they don't wait so long before they go in there, and pretty soon, they're watching for the corn to come. And then after a couple of weeks, you take the bushel of corn, and they can't wait for you to leave before they go in and eat the corn. And then, once they all get in there and they're eating the corn, you pull the rope. That's how we, at our farm in East Texas, get rid of the hogs. And there's so many of them, we don't even try to sell them for meat. Once they run in there, 
Then you drive up, jump out of the pickup truck with four assault rifles. And you can shoot 20 or 30 of them. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've seen the previews for the new uh, shooting show they've got. Um, and it just shows hundreds of the hogs being shot that way. Mm. Uh, Ted Nugent's new show. And this is how they domesticated animals. It's how people are domesticated. Serfs aren't allowed to produce enough food to live. Uh, our country rebelled because the colonies weren't allowed uh, to produce finished goods. We had to buy that from England. This is domestication. We are in the process of being deindustrialized, shut down. They paid $22 billion of taxpayer money to move Cadillac and Volt, GM, to China. I mean, the people running this country have made us debtors to China, all of it a fraud, all of it a plan. I want you to vet through more of the points, because you've got like 20 dots here, Steve. But, <laughs> but we want patriots out there to win-win. Sure, when they get high-quality foods from eFoods Direct that I believe in, that I use, my sole food sponsor, I could have 20, but I don't. They get that real security, so they're not going to be domesticated. So they cool. control that. But but you didn't want to even plug this. You just want to get the information out. But let's skip ahead, though, to the end. Where is all this headed? What do you see in the master plan with the riots in the Middle East and all of this? And then we'll go back through the points. But, I mean, looking at the global food crisis special report, here if food prices go up 30% like they have in the last year, 10% just in the last month, I have Reuters right here food prices jumped 10 percent in just july world bank yeah but, but if you look at that same reuters article it says corn and wheat jumped 25 percent in one month's time in fact here's the document campbell it's, it's closer to 40 percent in, in a total year there you go. again how did you predict this a year ago on record on my radio show and again here they'll just put us on welfare and get us dependent and 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 then steal middle class money uh from people that are trying to save and hurt those on fixed income social security in the third world six billion plus people in the third world this is a death sentence oh absolutely and the thing is is that what's happened now you, we hear about the problems with the trade deficit with the united states we know there's a trade deficit because china has all of our money they got more of our money than than we do and china is hurting for food so what are they doing with that money they're going around the world farming the planet and what they're doing also is since the bailout the farmers can't get the money they're coming in here and talking to our farmers who want to stay alive and in business and they say okay you can't get a bank loan we'll pay for you growing that crop we'll give you a profit on the crop and we'll take it out to china because the united states doesn't have any export laws on food or regulations up. I had Dinesh D'Souza, and I'm, I'm interrupting, I want you to continue. I had him on this week, you know, the guy that has the big hit movie, $26 million in a month, uh, 2016 Obama's America. But in that, he says Obama's anti-colonialist, so he wants to shut down America and, and shows how they're shutting us down by design, no debate. But it's, it, that's not what it is. The globalists are these mega banks that are reverse colonizing. They're using the third world to leverage us out, not helping the third world, to leverage us out and shut us down so they can buy it all up for pennies on the dollar. And now the globalists teamed up with China are engaging in colonial activities against the United States. There you it go. is diabolical. I'm sorry, go back to your point. Well, let's go back to the pigs. Let's go back to the pigs. And let's go back to food stamps. Now, Romney said he wants to reduce by 33% or something. I can't remember. No, 33 billion the expense on food stamps. That's not the problem. All that does is get him unelected because everybody that's being fed, you feed them, you lead them, what's going to happen? What really the solution would be from anybody is to very simply give the people a means by which they can earn enough money and get jobs and build the economy so they don't have to be on food stamps. Instead of telling people, oh, you can get some food stamps for feed the pigs, get some more food stamps, feed the pigs. Even if people don't need the food stamps, get the food stamps anyway. Well, that's why they wow. advertise. There's all these programs for you to get a giant group of people totally dependent so the government can say, now vote to turn your guns in. The now vote to, to get rid dependent. of your borders. The extent to which you're dependent is the extent to which you give power over yourself to that on which you depend. Why are we making Americans dependent? Okay, now let's talk about this. We're in the seventh year of a worldwide famine. China, Australia, um... Uh, <laughs> India, all of the major population centers of the United States, all of Europe, all of the, the entire planet lost their bee population, a high percentage of four years ago. 
Now we're in the state of a worldwide famine, seventh year, okay? We've got droughts and we've got food shortages every place. Every country that has more of our money than we have is buying our food. And so we have 12 million American kids that are go, hun go hungry every night. How many of our population are out of their homes because of all the foolishness? A lot of them, the only good meal they get every day is the school lunch in the morning. Oh, I've, I've got a daughter that's a school teacher in Pennsylvania, and it's absolutely pathetic. In some of these areas, we have people that work with our organization that are donating food to schools so that the kids that only get one meal a day by coming to school can have something to take home and eat over the weekend. That's America. Look, I got to ask you for you.